Hi, my name is Christy Carrolls. Today we're going to go through a demonstration of the McAfee MVision Cloud capabilities and how you can protect your AWS infrastructure with these functionalities. Things we'll talk about today in this demonstration are the ability to gain visibility into your AWS usage from your users, detect data exfiltration, compliance reporting and configuration management, as well as run DLP policy via on-demand scanning capabilities. Prerequisite for this is we have connection to our AWS infrastructure, which we've already done. Uh, we can then go ahead and just view uh, events from AWS by clicking in our dashboard and going to AWS services, Amazon Web Services. From my previous videos, you understand that the dashboard is extremely flexible and these cards are all modifiable so that you can easily view incidents or uh, events at a single glance. We'll see we are set up 100%, everything is checked in green. So we'll get started with this demonstration. First thing we're going to look at is how we can gain visibility into the usage within AWS. First thing we're going to look at is the user activity. So we'll go ahead and look at the user activity monitoring. What's nice about the AWS uh, connection is once that connection is established, the activity feed will start to flow and you'll see all the events starting to populate into this graph. Envision Cloud categorizes each activity to make it easier for security administrators to review the data. Our natural language processor, or the NLP, automatic cate automatically categorizes events received from AWS into the categories as shown on this page. For example, we can focus specifically on data delete. If we select the pencil, you'll notice that this is editing the activity and we have specifically 77 different categories that have already been categorized for the data delete functions and events. This automation greatly reduces the effort required to focus in on specific sets of data. Now that we're looking at this, let's go ahead and cancel out of here. We're going to focus in specifically on that data delete category. When we select that category, you'll notice that it modifies the data being shown below. Previously, we had over 17 million activities, but if we click on data delete, you'll notice there are 16 users with uh, only 1,900 activities. Since MVision Cloud tracks and records every single activity received from AWS, the ability to filter down makes it much easier to perform these investigations. And then these activities can be exported to a CSV, which can be then processed by external tools, or we can dive into the events specifically in this MVision Cloud dashboard. If we look at the activities tab, we notice that it loads up. There's a number of different items that we're seeing. We can scroll down and we can uh, delve directly into what's called a data delete bucket. The nice thing about Envision Cloud and its functionality is it provides you more information about where it's getting this data from. In addition to receiving event information from the CloudTrail logs, Envision Cloud provides activity enrichment information, as we can see down here, uh, to these events. It even gives information such as the ASN, or Autonomous System Number, which we see right here, and then we can talk about the look at the IP organization. Now what's nice about this is we can block these based on uh, the information that is given to us and it's important to understand that these types of things are usually landlines and can help us delve into specifically what the activity is and why it's important. So we can see that um, even though there's a ton of information, we can specifically look at an example and delve down very very quickly to investigate a specific user. So we can go back to users over here and let's go ahead and look at this person. We can add them specifically to a filter and you'll notice it's added right up here to the Omni bar and you'll notice this one person has 123 activities. If we click on the activities list, we've now delved down specifically into those 123. If you remember when we started, we had over 17 million activities and we had over 400 different users. So what was really nice is just through a few clicks, we were able to specifically delve down into the actions and capabilities of a user. We can even go a little bit further, and let's say we want to specifically look and add to our filter for taking action from what's called an untrusted location, or trusted for. And we look at trusted for none, and we add this to our filter, Ah, that's great. They have no untrusted activities. And the reason why this might be important to us is understanding that they may be performing this from an untrusted location and help us delve deeper into the actions that they are taking. So we'll go ahead and close this window. 
So what activities does Envision Cloud actually monitor? So we can click on the Incidents tab, Incidents, User Activity, and then Available Activities. Here we can see all of the events that Envision Cloud is tracking and recording. We can also see the default baselines last seven days, last 24 hours of the activity count. Here's our thresholds of what we're seeing. An anomaly and threat generation as well, specifically regarding uh, events that we're receiving about our cloud. So now that we understand that Envision Cloud has an extensive list of activities that are tracked for AWS, let's take a look at how the anomaly and threat engine use these events to detect and alert on speci specific activity. So if we select Incidents, Threats and Anomalies, and we can look at some of the anomaly settings, here we can see the anomalies that are included with the Envision Cloud for AWS services. This list will continue to grow as we further develop the product. Also note that if you subscribe to the cloud services, the anomaly engine works across cloud services as well for you. So this is important to identify uh, users, for example, who may be pulling data from multiple cloud sources. Um, but each individual service may not actually trigger this anomaly. So this is why it's very important to monitor this user activity across, across all your cloud services versus just one. And then it shows that it could, the intent could potentially be malicious. Another good example, if we see something here called the superhuman anomaly um, of a what's called cross-service anomaly would be this one right here. So if Envision Cloud witnesses activity from multiple sources and multiple locations, regardless of the service, this could be considered impossible travel for a user, right? It'd be like Superman flying across the country. Um, so this would trigger something called an anomaly. So let's say Bob accesses AWS from a location in the US um, and then accesses off 36, Office 365 from Europe an hour later. This would definitely be considered anomalous. Anyway, so let's review some of these threats and anomalies. We'll go up to incidents. threats and anomalies. And then we can look at the sanctioned services and these threats that have actually triggered. Here we can see how Envision Cloud differentiates uh, anomalies from threats. And remember a threat is a grouping of anomalies to provide us information about um, the incidents themselves. Let's go ahead and clear this out. Right now it's showing us a filter for the last seven days. We're going to clear that out. So here's our threats and here's our anomalies. And remember we were talking about uh, them being a grouping. So here's the first one. It's a threat, insider threats, and here is the items that it saw. So this user has downloaded an anomaly, anomalous large amount of data in a specific duration of time. Um, so the interesting part of it about this is said the activity name was this, here's the normal threshold, and as you can see, here's the anomaly, and it can give you information about it. You can also take resolve issues, so you can resolve it, or you can say it's a false positive. It can tell me about the user as well as the service that they used. So it's really nice because it's providing me this threat information um, versus just anomalies. Now, Envision Cloud doesn't specifically recommend looking at all the anomalies, just because if we see one, it doesn't particularly mean a threat, which is why we're specifically calling out the threats as being something more important for you to look at, because we've correlated the data for you based on our engines, and we're providing you this threat information. So, so far, we've discussed the cloud's, Envision Cloud's ability to have automated threat protection and its engine, which takes the cloud trail feeds and provides user behavioral analytics to determine anomalous behavior and real world threats. Another key aspect of this would be to track AWS configurations. This is actually a very popular way for users to utilize this tool to verify that their AWS accounts and uh, other areas are not open to exposure or possible risk. So we went to policy, configuration audit. This is where AWS's configuration auditing tool provides a set of policies to check for the AWS account for those exposures. So we have things such as world readable S3 buckets, probably something we'd want to look into if we had uh, that in our environment. By default, the policies are enabled to provide a detailed risk assessment of your AWS environment. 
as you see, there are 305 different policies out of the box, which can be selectively disabled if you'd like. These are all active out of the box. Things that you definitely want to look at, things such as S3 object version enabled, um, NAT gateway not used, if that one, EBS volume does not have a recent snapshot, that absolutely could be risky for the type of exposure that you uh, are looking at in your environment. And each policy is documented in detail in the help pages. So we'd be able to actually go into the search pages under here for help. And under the help pages, we can type in mVision cloud for AWS, oops. If I could type compliance policies and we're able to then select this help article and view in depth what these items are even looking at the different alert levels through CIS which is the Center for Internet Security so let's go back and go to our policy page and if we scroll back up we're able to click on any of these items as well and receive more information in gory detail in reference to the permissions needed any information that it has regarding the different policies that are running in real time now we're able to close this next thing we can look at are policy incidents things that may have happened based on uh, these different policies so let's go ahead and go to incidents policy incidents and let's look at those different incidents in reference to the violations uh, if we go into the policy incident summary we can look specifically by incidents by policy or incidents by scan we can specifically cancel out of the filters that we have applied and it shows this we have 168,000 different incidents based on policy within our environment from here we're able to uh, whittle it down let's say we just want to look at policy violations we're going to go from 100 almost 70,000 down to 1.5 thousand which makes it a whole lot easier for us to look into these different policies and as we go through we'll notice it's things such as uh, different rules that were um, that were broken or different policies that were broken we can specifically talk about audit violations and what's uh, involved in the audit violation we'll click audit violation right here and we'll notice that we're only 76 policies were violated and it provides us information into these auditing violations and as we scroll down we'll notice we definitely see more information as to the different audits so here's the one we were just looking at before world readable s3 buckets there are three total incidents and none of them have been uh, are unresolved which just means someone's gone through and actually resolved these incidents so this is really great for us to look into um, there's another one that's actually really interesting to us as well the unrestricted SSH access um, we can go ahead and we can specifically look at what this incident is and delve a little bit deeper into the incident once we click on it it shows us more about what the incident is and then we can even go even further into it and so we're noticing in just a few clicks we'll see how a policy violation can be filtered down and then we can also take action on this so it's a high severity we can it gives us what to do this is really great too it's automating a requirement or a suggestion of how to uh, stop this policy violation from happening from here you can also assign it to an appropriate owner for someone to take action on this incident and then it provides you even more information of the content the scan itself when they are run so it shows us that it's basically every 24 hours that they're run and then again taking action and suggestions of how to fix this incident Let's scroll back up to the top of our screen. We can remove our filters. And then again, this brings us back to our main incidents display. What's really nice is if there was an incident or a violation of some sort, MVision Cloud does have automated remediation capabilities in place, meaning that once an audit policy passes, so let's say it was run 23 hours ago and at the 24th hour it runs again, uh, the violation will automatically be marked as resolved in MVision Cloud so that it doesn't keep popping up as a policy violation. So this is a really great way for folks to be able to have this um, uh, automation in place to take some of the burden off of your uh, employees. Lastly, we're going to discuss on-demand scanning, specifically uh, DLP for S3 buckets. Let's go ahead and look at some of these DLP policies that we have in place. 
So let's go to DLP policy. We can look specifically on the uh, Amazon Web Services policy. We'll notice we have 35 policies here. We can look at only active policies, so we're not looking at any inactive policies. And it shows us we have something for on-demand scan credit cards, um, social security numbers, and classified docs. And these uh, policies will actually run at a specific amount of time and they'll scan those areas. You'll notice we have everything from OneDrive to Google Drive and Exchange, etc. So these are all of our different services that we could specifically filter on. But we have these items, they're active and the last time they were updated. So now we can go ahead and we can look at the policy incidents. Again, this is how we were looking at them before. And once this loads, we can go ahead and remove any filters that we have and just specifically look at the service name, so Amazon S3 buckets. And then let's whittle that down, even down to just the policy violations themselves. And you'll notice when we start looking at these different incidents, oops, let's go policy violations. You'll see that customers for processing, S3 buckets, we can actually start selecting some of these items to get a better understanding of these DLP policy incidents. You'll notice number 4-1, on-demand scan credit cards, was a policy violation. It provides data in reference to that. We can assign an appropriate user to take this as an action. It's a new incident status, right? If it was false positive, etc., we could assign that there. And it even shows you the redacted data so that the data is not all over the, the admin screens when they're looking at this possible PII or customer information or sensitive data that can be triggered based on these DAP items. So hopefully this demonstration provided you a great overview of how MVision Cloud can protect your Amazon Web Services. Have a great day. Thanks for your time.